Well, you guys ready for the word? Amen. 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 You guys ready? Hallelujah. Let's get ready for the word of God. Amen. And, and you know, you guys are here for that purpose. I mean, there's no other reason why you guys are here. Um, I know that uh, I'm here for that, to hear the word of God. Amen. I'm here because uh, we're, we need to... Uh, we need to be able to hear the word of God. Let me, give me a minute here. Pastor Christine just texted me, and uh, that was at 11.03, so that's okay. Everything's going well. And so, uh, well, praise God. Hallelujah. And so, but anyway, honey, I'm going to be using my cell phone right now. <laughs> Amen. So she was just, at 11.03, she said, there's no sound. Uh, is, is, is everything going well? I said, we're doing fine Remember, we're, we're three minutes behind, we're three minutes, uh, when we broadcast, it's always delayed here. So when it starts 11, it's probably 11.03 over there, amen. Let's open our Bibles to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter, and we're still on the pipeline of faith. We just cannot get off of it. Well, that's okay. That means the Lord is wanting us to know about this. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. For the Lord to keep us on this, that means he has a plan and a purpose. Think about it. Big faith is big things. Listen to this. When you go through battles, you have faith. Big battles cause big faith to happen. Amen. So we have to realize. So whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, know this, that it's only for momentarily. Devil thought he had you. He thought he could destroy you, but God is in control. God will just turn around with the devil meant for harm and bless you, and you'll learn, and you'll grow your faith, and you'll be aware, and you'll be able to be blessed and teach others. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how he uses us. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to Ephesians, the second chapter. Say with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 8. The Bible says here, for by grace are you saved. For by grace are you saved. So remember, it's only by, the, by the, the grace of God that you got saved. But notice it's through faith. So there it is again. There's the pipeline, the conduit. You're saved through faith. So in other words, you receive the grace of God from the throne of God. You received it through a pipeline of faith to you. It's a conduit going to you. And that not of yourself. Remember, it's not, you cannot save yourself. You cannot have what you have according to yourself. It is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So in other words, it's not about boasting. I cannot boast to you and say, well, you know, I bought me a house. I bought me this. I got a job. Ah, no, 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 no. It is through the grace of God. Say with me, it is through the grace of God. It is through the grace of God that I got everything I have through God. Amen. It is through the grace of God. Hallelujah. And it gets better. So in other words, God reaches you by the pipeline of faith. He reaches you. So now notice this. From now on until Jesus Christ comes, everything that you're going to receive from God, remember, from God, is through the conduit or the pipeline of faith. Everything. So in other words, you better start getting used to praying through that pipeline and say, Father, I thank you. I come to you by faith. How do you do that? By the word of God. Remember, it's the word of God. Faith, according to Romans, says faith comes to us by two hearings, hearing and hearing. So in other words, let's look at it this way. When I read, uh, when I read, well, I don't read the newspaper, no, but I read online. When I read online, I'm getting information. Say with me, information. information. Information that has been delegated to me by a reporter. So really, I'm reading news from a person, either if it's fake news or true, whatever it may be. I'm receiving that information through a person. So in other words, that is not revelation. That's just hearing, hearing, hearing. But now notice this. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing. So in other words, when you hear the word of God, now comes the words from heaven to you, and that becomes revelation. Like we read today, uh, scriptures or whenever you read scriptures. You know, revelation really all it is, it's revealed knowledge to you. When you read the Bible, you get revealed knowledge. It's not a new revelation. It's not like God says, okay, I got something new, new out of heaven. No, it's been there. It's just new to you, right? Come on, church. What's new to you may be already old to somebody else. So either the way, it's still revealed revelation. So that's how we get it. So here we have to understand from that moment on, we have to realize it takes faith. It takes faith. Amen. Now notice this. Go with me to Hebrews 11 chapter. 
And let's look, it takes faith. Now, for us to have faith, we've got to believe the Word of God. You've got to get your believing right. Uh, in other words, you've got to make a total commitment that I believe the Word of God. No, don't say, I'm going to believe the Word of God until I understand. No, don't get there. Believe the Word of God before you understand. Because see, that's believing in faith. So in other words, I'm going to believe now before I understand the Scripture because whatever the Scripture offers, God is going to reveal it to me. That's faith. Too many people say, well, Pastor, I don't understand the Bible. So, Lord, uh, Pastor, I just don't read the Bible. Well, see, you're trying to understand it. That's not the point. The point is not to understand the Bible. The point is to read it so faith can come. And when faith comes, then you get revealed knowledge of that Scripture. You see what I'm saying? So, in other words, when I read the Bible, I don't read it just simply because I need to inform myself. No, no, no. I read it so that I can grow in faith. There's scriptures that I may read that I may never understand, but does it matter? It's still the revealed word of God. One day I'll wake up to it and say, wow, that word was so powerful that I read last year. Man, I didn't understand. How many people know what I'm talking about? That happens. You can read a scripture a year ago, and today in this service you'll say, whoa, man, that scripture came alive. I never understood it. Well, that was a revealed knowledge from heaven, but how did it get there? By faith as you gave the word time to operate. Amen. Notice what it says in Hebrews 11 chapter. And this is where the devil works. The devil works to keep you away from the word. He knows if he can keep you away from the word, you'll never have revealed knowledge. If he can keep you away from the word, your faith, you'll never have faith. And then that's where he'll attack you in those areas. Amen. If he, uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and I love this. I love this. So highlight your Bible. And let me just encourage you. I, I know we have iPhones and all that good stuff, but it's so good to have a Bible because you can scribble on it. You can write on it, man. I, mine is from back in the 80s, and it's still been so good. Amen. Listen to what it says in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Verses 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him before his translation. He had his testimony that he pleased God. And let me explain something. Enoch was the only person that literally was translated. They didn't, Moses was one that could never find his body. Enoch was another one that could not find his body. He walked with God and then boom, disappeared. Now, now we find another one, uh, a prophet, Elijah. The same thing that happened to him. He was with God, but he was taken. Everybody, you know, Elisha saw the prophet Elijah taken off in a, in a fire chariot. We, we see that in the Bible. But Enoch, it was amazing that the Bible says Enoch was and he was not with us. Now notice this. Look at it again. It was by faith. By faith. Now I want you to see this. So in other words, whose faith was this in operation? Was it God's or was it Enoch's? Enoch's faith. By faith, he was translated. Now, notice, that's a level of faith that is so deep, so big. Uh, I want you to think, well, let's, let's just look at it for a moment. That's a big faith. To say, Father, I thank you that I can just be with you right now. Now, he didn't die. He didn't die. The Bible says he didn't die, never found his body. The Bible says he just rose up one day, boom, and was out of here. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but that's powerful. That's, and he says it was by faith. So in other words, there is a, a, a level of faith that you and I have ne- haven't reached. So that means it starts somewhere to get somewhere. So if Enoch was translated by faith, that means he started somewhere. And the Bible said he had children, he had grandchildren, and he had sons-in-law, and he lived 500-something years, so that's a long time. So he lived, he lived a life. He lived a life. He worked a life. He enjoyed food. He enjoyed worshiping God. He enjoyed his children, grandchildren. You know, he had a home. He was just like you and me. He worked the fields, whatever he did, whatever, cattleman, whatever it was. But the Bible says very clearly, look at it again. It was by faith. Look at it again. I want you to see this. By faith, Enoch was translated. He was gone. The Bible says in verse 6 now, but without faith, this is where you and I come in. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. What's that word impossible? Not possible. You'll never have anything and it will never be possible for you if you don't allow faith to come through that channel. You have to have faith. Now notice this. Well, pastor, I want to get saved. Well, by faith you get saved. Just ask Jesus in your heart. Well, I I just don't understand. 
Ask Jesus into your heart. Well, I just don't understand. What do I got? Ask Jesus into your heart. See, what's happening? They don't understand faith. But the moment they say, okay, pastor, I believe what you're saying. Okay, so what do I do? Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Say with me. Please forgive me. Forgive me, Jesus. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died, on that thir- uh, uh, died, but on that third day you're resurrected. Uh, so they repeat it. What's happening? Faith is coming. Why? They're hearing faith words. Faith words. The Bible. They're saying the Bible so they're hearing. Uh, one time an evangelist uh, by the name of Riley Stevenson, a wonderful friend of ours in Fort Worth, was in a mall. He teaches people how to evangelize. I'm going to bring him one day. Young man. And he was in Europe, just got back from London and did some wonderful work. But anyway, he was at a mall in Dallas, in Grapevine Mall. And he was witnessing and he stopped this individual, these two girls, of course, girls shopping. You know what I'm talking about? Girls shopping. And that's the best place to go, to go witness to girls and shopping, right? Come on, y'all supposed to laugh with me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All righty. So in other words, uh, he stopped him. He said, hey, uh, can I talk with you for a minute? And the girls come. No, no, listen, I'm okay. I want to ask you something. Do you know Jesus loves you? Yeah, I know Jesus loves me. Well, okay. Let me ask you a question. If, let's say, you leave this, 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 this mall and you were to die, do you know where you spend eternity? This is one girl who was on, she says, hell. <laughs> and so, but anyway, he said, okay, then I want you to believe with me that you can be saved. Remember, no, no one's going to change you but God. You can be saved. I want you to say with me, Jesus, come into my heart. So, They said, Jesus, come into my heart. He said, say with me, please forgive me, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I'm a sinner. Say with me, on the third day, Jesus resurrected. Uh, On the third day. And then he said, wait a minute. She said, wait a minute. You're trying to get me saved. He said, your mind just kicked in, but your heart was after God. Now think about that for a moment. Isn't that deep? Your heart wanted transformation, wanted Jesus, but your mind kicked in. And this is where we have to operate. Now, was she in faith? Yes, she was in faith until her mind kicked in. Her mind took her out of faith. So then he got her back and said, now, go, no, no, just go ahead and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Please forgive me. Now, receive Jesus. And she said, I receive you. Got saved. Joined the church. Those two ladies are still are in that church that he he reached them. Now, notice this. Now, this lady will say it was my mind that interfered in that in that thing. So we have to understand something. You will never please God or anything You'll never have anything unless you go by faith. Look at it again. But it is impossible to please him, God, for he that cometh to God. When you come to God, you must believe first. Believe first that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you've got to come believing. I'm coming to God because God is going to bless me. I'm not going to the bank. Bank told me I don't can't do it, but I'm going to God. God, I thank you. That you can make a way where the bank can't. You can make a way. Or I'm going to God because God, you can make a way that the doctor says I can't. Well, look at Pastor Christine. What what the doctor said was not according to the word of God. She switched over to the word of God and says, I don't believe the report of the man. I believe the report of the Lord. And Jesus said, I am healed. What was it? Faith coming, the channel of healing which came through that pipeline of faith. And that's how Pastor Christine got healed. You see, I can tell you testimony after testimony about my, our personal life, how God used faith as we use faith in our walk with God. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, it literally is impossible. Tell me it's impossible. It's impossible. You have to get it right. You've got to believe it. It's impossible that I'll never have anything unless I go to God. It's impossible that God will give it to me. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have to see that. Now, I want you to see something. Whenever you hear the word first mentioned, or or let me say it this way, a word that is first mentioned in the Bible is the first word that you that probably was the birth, the birth of that word. In other words, when you first have when I when Jason was born. There was none other like him. When I saw him and they brought him into my arms. There's nothing else on this world like him. Yeah, he's a boy, but this is Jason. DNA of God. So different, so different. Fingerprints so different. So in other words, that was a first mention of Jason. Now, Jason grew up to be a man, but how did he become a man? Through God, the formation of God. First mention. So in other words, whenever there's a first mention, that means it's very critical for us to understand something. Say with me, Jesus is Lord. 
first mention was Jesus. Jesus, that's powerful, is Lord. So in other words, whenever you see a, in the word in the Bible, a first mention of something is getting your attention, just like Jason got my attention. Whoa, whoa, I'm shaking. I hope I don't drop him. Oh, you know, wow, what a beautiful little boy. You know, I can't carry him now. <laughs> he was over the house. He was over the other house of the day. And I said, man, I can't. Even, he's so big, you know, so muscular, like a lot, a lot of you guys here. I want you to see something now. Go with me to Hebrews. You're in Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Say with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. Notice what it says here. Oh, he's so good. Amen. Say with me, he's so good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now notice what it says in, in, verses, in verses 38. Are you there? I'm going to take it slow because I want you to see this. He was a 10 chapter, verse 38. Now. <laughs> do you see that? Now. Wake up. It, really what he's saying here. Listen, first mention. First mention here. The just shall live by faith. First mention right there. The just shall live by faith. Quite interesting now. There are three other scriptures that came behind this. So in other words, the second one came after the first mention, the just shall live by faith. Remember, the word just was in the Bible, but never together, the just shall live. That was never in the Bible before. The just shall live. Tell me the just shall live. The just shall live. So we know that's some powerful. The just shall live. I'm righteous before God. I'm going to live here on earth and ever, everlasting powerful. But now the first mention was the just shall live by faith. That was the first time that it was ever mentioned. And from that moment on, the faith movement of the Word of God came into our lives. So now we're saved through that channel of faith or uh, of, of, of the faith channel that we need. So in other words, listen to what it says here. So the just shall live by faith if any man. Now, I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible has any man. It's italicized. Now, you may say, for the, I'm going to teach you something right now. Whenever you see italicized in the Bible, that means it was added in there when the king wrote this. Now, if you take out any man, let's read it this way. Now, the just shall live by faith, but if drawing back, my soul shall not have pleasure in him. So in other words, he's saying, don't you draw back. Don't you draw back in faith. Now, I want to tell you what happens when drawing back happens. Drawing back means you get to the point where you say, well, maybe we better have a plan B. Do you know something? There is no plan B in faith. I know we have plan Bs. Plan 1, plan 2, plan 3, plan 4, plan 5, plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Now, notice this, that's lottery playing. You're not too sure. So then if plan F happens, then you say, it worked. No, that was plan F. Because you had so many opportunities to hang in there thinking it would work. But no, if you'll say, no, there is no other plan but the word of God. By faith, if I draw back, I'm not in the word of God. I'm not in faith. Now, it's easy. It's easy to draw back. It really is. I mean, uh, I want you to think about in your personal life, how much have you drawn back from faith? Where if you study the drawn back, it was under pressure. That's when you drew back. Now, that's, that's, that's where we all are. It's under pressure where we draw back from faith. But if we can make a determination, I'm not going to be moved. I don't care if they're going to repossess my house tomorrow. I'm staying in faith in the name of Jesus. Now, that's serious. Rather than say, well, God, if you don't come through tomorrow, then I'm going to have to do something about this. No, 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 because now you're, you're operating in your self-will. Now, this is what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. You have to have so, assur so much assurance in the word of God that you believe it, that nothing's going to move you. I don't care if the devil sends landmines around you. You're not going to move. I'm not going to draw back. I'm not going to draw back. I'm not. In fact, if you look at that word, there's a drawing back that the Bible says that if, if we come to God, we must believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So in other words, when I come to God, I'm not coming uh, to God just uh, 
Uh, well, okay, God, I mean, you know, I know you can do it, but God, I know pastor says you can do it. I know the Bible says you can do it, but, but God, but, 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 back, just turn to God. And I know the pressure is there to do that because we're not used to God fulfilling that. We're so used to our mind dealing with it. But if we can hang in there and look at it again, he says it is impossible, impossible. Without faith is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Can you say amen? I'm going to seek him. I'm going to seek him. Say with me. I'm going to seek him. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, you got to stay steady in the midst of the storm. I've been in storms and I'm telling you what, it's hard to stand steady, but you got to stay steady. Stay steady. I'm gonna, I want you to look at something. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. Talking about staying, staying steady. Listen, staying steady is where the action's at. But it's also the determination of your freedom of, of faith. Hallelujah. And, and you know, what if you do mess up? What if you do mess up? Well, God loves you enough to say, okay, son or daughter, uh, you were not in faith, but let's, let's, I'm full of love and grace. Let's do it again. God is good at that. Listen, if he, if he didn't give you any second chance, third chance, fourth chance, you would blow it, man. You would completely be gone. But thank God for his mercy. Say with me right now. Thank God for his mercy. Father, when we blow it, Lord, you're still there to love us back, to teach us through that mess up. and We'll get it right. Thank you, Father. You love us. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> now, look what it says in 1 Corinthians, the, cha the 15th chapter. Hallelujah. Are you there, 15, 8, 58? 58, excuse me. 58, yes. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Hallelujah. When you have it, say, I've got it, Pastor. All righty, hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, my beloved, oh, Jesus. He's talking to the body of Christ again. Beloved, my beloved. He's talking to you. Therefore, my beloved, brethren or sister, be steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. What labor, pastor? Laboring to stay in faith. It's not in vain. So if you see this, and I love this because see, it tells me not to be unmovable, be steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So in other words, when pressure hits me, then I got to be steady in him because I know as I'm steady, it has its reward. It has its reward if I'm steady. If you're steady a little bit, that's okay. It has its reward. But how about staying steady all the way? Stay steady. Immovable. Listen, immovability happens because we, we're shaken by things. I mean, you know, we become shaken by things. I mean, let, let's face it. We're carnal in a sense, but yet we're spiritual. But the carnal still is big over the spiritual sense. And, and how does a spirit man grow? Give it time in the word but also controlling that carnality. It's like, it's like uh, you know, uh, you know I, I, I enjoy desserts. How many people enjoy desserts here? Oh, I, but I, I enjoy chocolate. Oh, um, but, you know, it's been almost, uh, well, I, I fell off the wagon this weekend. But I, I literally stopped eating sugar for about three years. Stayed away from donuts. And my, my son-in-law, he loves jelly-filled donuts. Ooh, <laughs> Jesus. Jelly filled donuts. I'm weak to that, man. I'll admit, God, you know it. I love it. I love anything to do with cherry pies, apple pies, things that have fillings. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. And, and, uh, and one day they brought some Krispy Kreme donuts to our house. I said, Lord, may I? I didn't hear anything. See, it's up to me, really. So I went ahead and had one. Ooh, it was so good. But it was so sugary. One donut had me like, oh, it's so sugary. Ah, you know. But this morning I got up and I had some coffee. And guess what I thought? Man, I want a donut with this. After three years staying off the wagon, now I want a donut. Man, hallelujah. One donut messed up. Was I immovable? I was immovable. I was weak yesterday or whenever I had those donuts. I'll, I'll admit with you, your pastor was weak. Now, that means I got to get back stronger today. No, buddy, you're not having a donut. <laughs> you're not having sugar in your coffee now. You're drinking a cream. That's it. You're not having any more dessert. You may like it, but you're not. Why? Because, see, I know that I can be strong over that little donut. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. And so I overcame it. I came to church. Say with me, hallelujah. Amen. Without a donut. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, that's the just living by faith. 
Pastor, you just gave up a donor. No, it's more than giving up a donor. I'm controlling this little flesh from trying to dominate its thoughts. Now, that's what you have to walk in. What is it that dominates your flesh? <laughs> Don't answer. <laughs> Amen. What is it? Well, you're the only, the master over it. And it's going to be by you taking your authority in that word and say, no, I'm going to dominate this issue right now by the word. So what's happening? You're taking control. You're letting your faith now operate through that pipeline even more. That's the problem with, with, with the world. The world's dominated by the, the mind, the will, and the emotion. How they feel, what they sense, what they smell, what they hear, what they see. They're ruled by it. God doesn't operate by that. In fact, he sees through the eye of faith, and that's how you see. We, we, we hear by the ear of faith. So we operate those ways. So in other words, faith comes through that. Are you getting this, church? Faith comes through that. Now, I want to show you something. Go quickly to, uh, and we read this scripture. Did we, did we, we read 1 Corinthians, right? 15th chapter. All right, look at, uh, go with me to Romans now. Let's look at Romans real quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God the donut did not have rulership. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. No, no, I'm using that for my personal life, but you know what I'm talking about. Romans, the 10th chapter. And this is where I want you to look at it. In verses 17, this is what I've been saying, but I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you in the 10th chapter? Look what it says in verses 6. But the righteousness. Ooh, but the righteousness, which is of faith speaketh on this wise say not in thy heart who shall ascend into heaven what is to bring who is to bring christ from above or who shall descend in the deep that is to bring up christ again from the dead i'll, I'll, I'll explain that but what is it or what saith it thy word that is in thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach so in other words he's saying this is the world. Well, who brought Christ down into hell? Who brought Christ up? Well, you know, you know what I'm talking about, childish stuff. Well, who is God? Who made God? It's like saying, well, who it came first, the chicken or the egg? You see what I'm saying? Uh, so so they're, they're babbling. They're saying, well, well uh, yeah, but who made God? Well, who's Jesus? Well, why did Jesus? We don't say those things, although those things, the mind wants to know those things. It's, 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 it's futile to ask those questions. But this is the power. This is the power. What saith? What saith? What do you speak? It's the word of faith which we hear, which is preached. Right now you're hearing the word of God. So you're hearing me preach, but it's actually the word. So what's happening right now? Faith is growing in you. Oh, you can't see, but you, can, you may not be able to see it. Or some of you may be able to feel it or not. But it's growing in you because the Bible says, I don't care what you say. Pastor, I can't feel it. No, 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 no. We don't operate by feeling it. It's by faith. It's by faith. It's there. How many people hear me? Raise your hands. Do you hear me? So you're hearing the word of God. So faith is coming in you. Amen. So in other words, we're not to say, well, pastor, I come to church to learn about who bought God, who made God. Or da, 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 no, 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 that's not going to help your future. It's not going to help anything about you. There's people like that. that that's all they want to do is talk about, well, God, I believe this and God this. No, 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 no. Stay away from all that mess. You know what I'm saying? The thing about it is faith. Now, listen, listen to this. Drop, drop all the way. Let's drop all the way, all the way, all the way. Listen to what it says. Verse 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved amen all of us believe right amen. for it for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation there it is again mouth 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 why is it important what you say because what you say you're going to say what you believe why is it important to believe? Because what you believe, you're going to receive. We have to believe the word of God. Therefore, if I say it enough, and if you say it enough, you're going to believe it and you're going to say it. So whenever the circumstances come in life, you're going to say the word. And that's the kicker right there. That's where the reality is, saying the word. You've got to catch your mouth. I, I encourage couples, be accountable to each other. Uh, help one another control their faith or their negativity. In other words, one says, I'm just so sick. The other one says, whoa, 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 what does the Bible say? Are you sick or not? See, what's happening? You're learning communication. 
Christine was always, always my communication pastor, pa uh, part, partner. I would always say things and she said, uh-uh, what does the Bible say? Okay, I, I negate those words. I've learned early in age to negate words, uh, you know, you know, uh, negate words that come out that are not from the word of God. Like, I will never have that. Oh, wait a minute. I negate that word. I shall have anything in Jesus' name. Or, or, man, I just don't understand. No, I, un I negate that word. I do understand in Jesus. See, that's faith. People say, well, pastor, what if you don't know and you really don't know? Well, you still operate in faith. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all through Christ. I know how to handle this. Thank you, Father. I know. It's faith. They'll say, pastor, how did you know how to do that? It's faith. I remember uh, I, I worked with my father. My father taught me how to work on engines. And I became real good. My father was a specialist on engines. I became real good. But uh, when I got into business, into building cars or building engines and stuff, it still took faith. I was learning faith. I remember I, I would say, okay, Lord, show me what's the problem with this car, Lord. You, you would, people would say, well, that's kind of ridiculous. God doesn't care about that. No, 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 no. Father, what is it, Lord? You tell me. And I would know in my spirit what it was. And I would fix the car. People would say, well, how did you know you don't have a... You don't have any kind of computer and to know the car. It's just the Spirit of the Lord. I remember one day I was given a pen by my students, a gold pen. You know those gold pens they give pencils to? And I had a pen here, and I remember checking my oil. And uh, I closed the hood, went inside, and I looked at my pen. And I said, oh, no. Oh, man. Well, maybe I left it at home. Maybe. The Lord told me at that very moment, not a maybe, it's where is that pen? I said, Lord, where's that pen? Well, I, I, I just had to go home at that moment, so I drove about 25 miles. We drove, and you know what I'm saying? So when I got home, I couldn't find the pen. I said, Lord, where's that pen? And the Lord said, you remember when you checked that oil? I said, oh, Jesus, yes. Oh, pop the hood. There was the pen right where the motor mount is. That pen could have bumped off and fell off into the highway, and we would have lost it. I learned a lesson. If you will listen to God, he'll show you everything you need to know, even the smallest thing, which was that pen. And I heard the voice of the Lord. I said, Lord, I thank you. You see, what's going on here? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. When I hear the word of God, I say what the word says. Now look at, look at verses 12 of the, of, the, of the same chapter. Verses 17, excuse me, of the same chapter. Say with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. So then, faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It's the Word of God that's going to build your faith. You need, you, need, you need things in your life. It's the Word that's going to show you. You need a breakthrough. It's the Word. It's the Word of God. Say with me, it's the Word of God. Amen. So in other words, the Word comes. The Word comes. Say with me, the Word comes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to Mark 11 now. Hallelujah. Mark 11. Ooh, hallelujah. So in other words, faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. Anything God says in the word, it's going to help me. It's going to benefit me. What God says in the word is going to benefit me. That's why the devil hates the Bible. That's why he hates people that are in the word of God. That's why, and I'll be frank with you, when God wakes me up to go pray and I get in the word of God, I am honest with you. I get sleepy getting the word. <laughs> I'll start reading the Bible. and, and I, oh, I don't, I don't. You Wake up, wake up, wake up. You're going to read the Bible. Why? Is it, have you ever thought why you're... Wow, all of a sudden you, you got sleepy and you couldn't sleep before and all of a sudden you're reading the Bible and get sleep. People ask me, Pastor, I have insomnia. How do I go to sleep? And I'll say, get the Bible and read it. You'll fall asleep. And they'll say, Pastor, it worked. I say, yeah, now control yourself and read that word, man. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so true. You want to fall asleep, read the Bible. The devil's not going to bother you. He's going to make you sleep. Sleepy. Amen. Hallelujah. But, but see, we got we to know that. Mark the 11th chapter. Verses 22. Now we just left Romans. So then faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. Right? Is that what we said? Now notice what it says in verse 22. This is Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto them all together, have faith in God. Jesus said it. I believe it. But notice the translation of have faith in God. Now listen to it. The, the, the text from the purity of the, the translation, it says it this way, have the God kind of faith. Now notice this, I wrote in my Bible, have the God kind of faith. 
So Jesus answered and said, Have the God kind of faith. Pastor, is it possible to have the God kind of faith? Jesus said it. Now, all together, I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. He's not a liar. He's not a liar. All right, so what do you choose to do this very moment? Believe or believe that he's a liar? I believe Jesus. He's no liar. So if he said, I can have the faith of God, then that tells me my faith can be big like him or even like Enoch that disappeared in faith. I can have faith like him. So where do I start, Pastor? Well, let me tell you something. Start where you are now. Little things, little baby steps. How did you learn how to walk? Did you ride a bicycle when you were learning how to walk? No, you didn't. You remember your first bicycle ride? Anybody remember their first bicycle ride? Training wheels. <laughs> Y'all are laughing. Y'all must have had a pretty good one. Amen. Y'all remember the first time you walked? I, 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 for some reason, I remember that. I think the, the, the younger you get, you start remembering things. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I used to say, how can they remember dates? How can my grandfather remember dates? Back in 1958, this and that. Back in 1932, on such and such day, it was raining. Said, how did they remember that? Well, I'm, I got news for you. You do start remembering those things. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. God just increases wisdom. Right, brother? Right, sister? Right, everybody? Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. All righty. Let's don't question that now. Amen. So in other words, think about it. How did you first learn to walk, learn to ride a bike? Amen. <laughs> I got to know about that one. So in other words, in other words it, it, took some, it took some training. How did you first learn how to swim? Now, in the old days, and y'all remember this uh, by movies, but I know it. You want to learn how to swim, son? <laughs> that's, that's child abuse now. <laughs> that's child abuse now. But, in the, but man, listen, that's the way my dad learned. Grandpa threw him in the river. Swim on your own. He learned to swim. And he came to me and said, I'm going to teach you how to swim. No, 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 no. <laughs> Amen. I learned Learn how to tread water quick. Turned out I could stand in the water when he threw me in there. <laughs> Amen. So we have to understand something. Here we find out that it's a process of faith. You start growing it. In other words, I got a headache. Okay, pastor said faith comes by here. I'm used to going to Tylenol or whatever. I'm used to go to it. Now, I'll believe God. Father, I thank you that you're healing my sinus. I'll not take medicine right now because I believe in you. And then you'll say, whoa, faith. Baby step of faith right there. What do you do? You keep it going. Keep going, faith. Do things that you're uh, uh, inviting God. Now, I'm not saying to jump into the impossible at that very moment. Jump into something that you can do and knowing that God can help you and you can understand it. Taking baby steps, learning faith. Look at the word of God. Look at it again. Hallelujah. Can you say Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, have the God kind of faith. Now remember, God's kind of faith is big. Come on, church. It's big, 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 big. Hold your finger there. Hold your finger there. We're going to come back to it. Go back to Hebrews. Say with me, God is big. God is big. He's intending for me to be big. He's intending for me to be big. Amen. Amen. That settles it. See, if you can believe that, don't, you know, I used to think God is so far away. He, he will never hear me. He will never talk to me. Oh, only the... The old bearded, long bearded priest can can know God. Only the only the, the, the Papa or the Pope and only the Cardinals can get in there with God. And then I used to believe that. I used to say, well, you know, that's and many people till this day. That's why they have confessional booths. That's why they have priests and all that. But the Bible tells us we can go straight to God. Now notice what it says in Hebrews. Now go with me to Hebrews 11 chapter. And I want you to see something. Remember, God is a big God. Hold your place there in Mark. But go to Hebrews 11 chapter. Verses 1. Look at verses 1. Verses 1. Hebrews 11 and 1, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. There it is. Faith to, make, to grow in you, you've got to believe. Faith makes things. Hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I have hope. I have hope for this. I don't see it. It's coming through faith. Substance is coming through faith. I don't know how I'm going to get this new big house. God's going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to get a car. God's going to do it. You see, and I notice you've got to believe God. People say, well, I can only look for something in my budget. Believe God that your budget can still get what others say 
they can get, but you can get it through God. I'm telling you, my, my daughter is here. She thought she would never own a house. She thought she would always rent a house. She thought because her husband doesn't make enough and they don't make enough. And, and, and so when they ever tried to step out in faith, they went to go look at something in the 80s. And when you find something in the 80s, it's not going to be in a good part of town and it's not going to be a real nice house. And so you're limited. You're limiting yourself. Why, why do you want an $80,000 house when, when that's easy for you to afford? But that, that's all we can uh, well, That's not faith. Okay, with what you make, let's believe God for a house for you. Don't you think about it. You say, Father, I'm going to believe, and I want you to go to a part of town that you want to live. You drive in there. You dream. You see your children riding the bikes. You see your children going to school. She did that. She found an elementary. She said, oh, I can see Sophia. I can see this. I can see that. I can see. Oh, I can see. I can see. And her mind tried to say, oh, it's too much. No, no, I can see. I can see. What happened? In that neighborhood, a woman needed to sell a house. She just got a divorce. She was moving out of state. She needed to get out of the house quick, quick, quick. She didn't care if she sold that house under $100,000. In a neighborhood of 200 plus, you're going to buy a house pretty close to $100,000. See, this is faith in operation. They got a house. They got the house, beautiful house. Children are playing up and down the sidewalks. It's a beautiful house, beautiful. I go over there and she says, Dad, it's a miracle. I know this is a miracle. God works in miracles. And, and now her husband is believing for greater things because faith, it was in that in, invaded. Hallelujah. Come on, can you say amen? amen? Now notice this. Remember, God's a big God. So are you. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders, the people of old, obtain a good report. A good report, like Jenna, Teresa got a house. Everybody's, God's blessed you, hallelujah, amen. amen. Now notice, it's through faith we understand, or here it is. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So things that were seen were not made of things which do appear. Go back to Mark. What's the world? Worlds were made by faith. So in other words, how did God make the worlds? How did he make the planets? Go study it. Go study it in Genesis. He said, let us. He, re- he produced it by speaking it. Light be, light was. Water be, water was. How did Adam name the animals? Oh, Jesus, I want you to understand so many animals to name. So many animals to name. So many bugs to name. So many amphibians and all that stuff. How does one carnal person name all this? All together. By faith. And to this day, we have those names by faith. Say with me, by faith. By faith. Pastor's alarm is on. <laughs> Amen. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. By faith. Amen. Hallelujah. So what's going on? Can't turn my phone off. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this by faith. Look at it again. Mark. Verse 22. Of chapter 11. And Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. We just read the same kind of faith God has. God spoke it, created it. Same way you do it. You start speaking it. You start creating it. You start developing it. Faith in you. Start believing. I shall be blessed all the days of my life because the word says I'm blessed. There you go. Start establishing it. If Jesus Terry starts speaking to your children, your future children, I know he's coming, but let's still use faith into the future. Father, I thank you that my children will be blessed all the days of their life. Amen. I thank you that they will never know poverty. They'll never know the drudgery of sin. They will never know the problems around them because they have faith in you. It's possible. You see what I'm saying? Start training ourselves to walk in faith. Start training children to walk in faith. Start training one another. That's what we, Christine and I do. We're always talking faith. We're always dreaming. We're always believing. We're always speaking. You, when you get around Christine, you're going to say, whoa, she's believing stuff. You know, the other day, she started looking at mansions. Amen. Now, that's faith. That's a faith woman. Not only mansions, but mansions that are unoccupied. 
He found cities that are unoccupied. There's not a city, there's a city not far from called Meridian, Oklahoma, that once had a downtown, that once had buildings. It it's went under. Buildings are still up. By Guthrie. I told Christy, we're gonna have to go look at this. I want she said, we gotta go look at these buildings. What if, 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 amen. She's got faith. What's going on? Faith is stirring. She's, we saw some mansions, and I'm saying, oh, gosh, drug dealers, they run off and leave these mansions. People that had mansions through inheritance, they, they go crazy. They die, and they have no inheritance, so it's left. There was one mansion in Laguna Bay that these children, teenagers, walked into, and this mansion was empty since the 1960s. Still had electricity. That means there's a foundation paying the bills, but it's so empty they left it somebody somewhere has so much money that they don't even know they have a house paying electricity <laughs> and these kids go in there and they're in there looking at it, they're taking videos whoa whoa furniture it's almost like they disappeared toothbrushes are still there somebody just decided to leave a mansion don't you need a mansion don't you need a better house, a housing? Come on, church, amen. Why not believe God? Come on, give the Lord a praise. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says here, listen to what it says here. It says here, Jesus said, have faith in God or have the faith of God. Now, I want you to see this. For verily I say unto you, listen closely, that whosoever Jesus said shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith. There it is again. If you, if you believe it, you're going to say it. If you believe it, you're going to say it. Those things which he saith shall come to pass. Now notice this. He shall have whatsoever his bank account says. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I read it wrong. He shall save. He shall have whatsoever his budget says. God help me out. No, he shall have whatsoever he saith, saith, not dream, saith. I shall have this in Jesus. The word faith comes by hearing the hearing of the word of God. I speak the word of God. My faith pipe is open for the word of God. I can have everything God calls me to have. It's got to come to the faith. It's not coming by jobs. I can't have four jobs to buy this house. It's going to take one job and one job is going to buy this house. One job is going to need all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. One job. People are, the average American has, listen, the average American and really today to this day, it takes the husband and wife to work. Two people have to work in a household now, the average person. And if you study the average person, they don't have, they don't have money to tie them for the next paycheck. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Now listen to what I'm going to say. If a person is living the paycheck to paycheck, I want you to think about what has that paycheck stops. What are you going to do? But if you're in faith, you can believe God. I, Father, I thank you that my paycheck will stretch and I will live into next week's and next week. And before you know it, you're having money that you've had before and all of a sudden you're seeing it going to the next week. Next week's coming. I'm telling you, this is awesome. This is faith. Amen. Your paycheck is coming and you're still trying to spend what you had three weeks, three months ago. Come on. Come on, church. Amen. It's possible. Come on. My sister-in-law, if I can say this, I'm not going to say her name, but she knows what I'm talking about. She said, you know, I, I, we just, uh, uh, I'm eligible for Social Security. All right, I, I know what that means. I'm not too far from there. But she says, you know, uh, my husband's still working, but I'm drawing Social Security. But you know what I'm doing with the Social Security? I'm just putting it in savings. I like that. Amen. Come on. When people are living on Social Security, can't make it on Social Security, are living from paycheck to paycheck. Come on, church. You should not desire living on Social Security. You should desire living on God. Hallelujah. Come on. Social Security is just money you made. You need to get back. But you're not going to live on that. You're going to live on God. How does it happen? By faith. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, it says here, hallelujah. Therefore, I say unto you, verse 24. This is Jesus now. It's not Pastor Robert. It's Jesus. You believe Jesus? Say with me, amen. amen. Therefore, I say unto you that whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Let's break that down. Therefore, I say unto you what things soever you desire, comma, when you pray, comma, 
believe that you receive them, comma, and you shall have them, period. Look at those three commas, phrases. I shall have whatsoever I believe that I have. I shall have. Father, I thank you that I ask you for this. And I thank you, Lord, I receive it. I don't have it yet in the natural, but I have it in the spirit. I thank you, Lord, I have it. Now, what happens at that very moment? I thank the Lord. I prayed. I thank you, Father. Thank you that I have it, Lord. Every day you're saying it. Now, don't go back and pray it all over again. Because now you're not believing what you prayed the first one. Too many people are, will pray one prayer the very next day, pray the same prayer, the next day pray the same prayer. They don't long, longer believe. They're just now wanting to express that they need prayer, but now they're not willing to believe it. That's why you have to say, would you agree with me that I believe that I'm such and such? You know, when, when we set out the prayer request for Pastor Christine, she, she's healed. We know that. She went to surgery Friday, did great. Thank God for everybody who prayed. But if you'll study the prayer, how it went, would you agree with us? I'm not asking you to pray the first prayer. I'm asking you to agree what my prayer is with God. So how do I agree, Pastor? The Word of God. You want to know how to agree with somebody? The Word of God. The Bible says, Christine is healed in Jesus' name, therefore it settles it. She's healed, healed. We believe that she received her healing. Thank you, Father. She's healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. She's healed. Tell me she's healed. She's healed. She's healed. That settles it. How you doing, healed woman of God? Laying there, getting some rest. Much needed rest. You're doing well. Amen. She says, amen, I'm healed. Well, faith is operating. Amen. amen. So when you pray, believe that you receive them. Now, let's look at something right after this. And I've got to show you this, and then we're going to close. And this is what it says. Verses 25. And when you stand praying which you just prayed in faith, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. So in other words, if we're in unforgiveness, it's not going to work through that pipeline. Faith will not work. If you have ought against anybody, you're, it's going to hinder your faith. God will not bless you with faith or with a thing through faith until first you recognize, I release that person or that person, I release that person, whatever, I release them. It's not about feeling, it's about faith. And it's fact for your benefit to release the person. Let's say somebody hurts you in life and you're hearing this. And you remember that hurt. By faith, you say, Father, I forgive such and such right now. I forgive them. Now, Father, I thank you for faith operating me. What did you just do? It wasn't a feeling. It was the word of God. Three weeks go by and you're driving down the road and you, and you stop at a 7-Eleven and you see that person that hurt you that you just prayed about Sunday. What do you do? Ugh. There's that person. No, by faith I forgive him that person. Hey, how's it going? Person. What are you doing? That's faith. See, but we don't do that. We want to hurt somebody that hurt us. So really it's hurting you. It's hurting your faith. And that's what the devil wants. Hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt faith. Hurt people hurting their own faith. That's the devil's work. But if we'll say, okay, Jesus said, I can have whatsoever I say when I believe and I pray. But first of all, I got to forgive. Lord, I forgive such and such by faith. Amen. Now, Father, thank you for my faith is working. It's not about feelings. It's not. And when you see the person, you're not going to say, well, Lord, I thought I forgave. No, you forgave him one time. That's it. You see what I'm saying? Can you say amen. Y'all got real quiet. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. So we're believing God. Say with me, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. By, faith. By faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I, have I have whatsoever I saith. So get ready. Get ready. I'm going to receive. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Go ahead and stand up, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus is so good. I receive it. Hallelujah. And I forgive. Hallelujah. I forgive. Hallelujah. I receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what it's at. That's what it's at. Your rest of your life, remember, everything you can ask God has to come to that faith pipe or that conduit of faith. Everything. 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 Husband, wife, babies, children, home, money. Healing, 
anything, fishing, anything. Bobby, you hear what I'm talking about? Fishing poles, hallelujah. Amen. God can give you a real good, expensive Garcia for $20, amen. Come on, church, amen, hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. I'm telling you, I, you know, I'm going to give you a testimony. I, you know, I used to ride most like in the young days, and I had an accident. And, and it, it, I just sold my bike. I said, I'll never ride again. I, I, and all of a sudden, a couple years ago, maybe five, four, four years ago, five years ago, I started wanting a motorcycle. And, and so what did I do? I said, Lord, I, I rebuke fear. I rebuke, uh, you know, I was just acting silly. I was jumping mountains with my bike. So you can, I fell and broke my leg, you know, broke my knee. Anyway, I said, Lord, uh, I thank you. You give me a bike, Lord. And I remember the Lord put in my heart to start believing for a bike. Start believing for a bike. So I started looking at bikes and I would say, thank you, Lord. Oh, I, I, do I want a Harley? Do I want a, a Yamaha? Do I want a Honda? Do I want a Suzuki? Oh, but I want a touring bike. I want a big bike so I could take Christine with me. I want a bike that I could just, Arr, shake the windows around my neighborhood, amen. And so I'm looking, and I said, oh, money, no, no, I'm not, uh, in Jesus' name, I got a bike. There was a guy, and I'm telling you this about faith, there was a guy that bought a bike, this bike that I have, and his wife said, uh-uh, you're not going to ride. You remember what happened to Billy Bob? <laughs> you're not having the bike. You got to sell that bike. You got to sell it. I'm telling you, you got to sell it. You got to sell it. You got to sell it. I don't care what you pay for it. You sell it. Guess who put God put in his path? Pastor. Bought the bike cash. Very reasonable that if I tell you the price, you say that was faith. It was faith. I got it in my in parking lot, in my drive, in my garage. Amen. Put Christine on that bike, right around. And I said, honey, faith is at work. You hear, whoa, 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 whoa. Faith is at work. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God can do it. Amen. He could do anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, today, this morning, we have faith. We increase in faith. We increase in the knowledge of your word. Jesus, thank you that you love us so much to give us the God kind of faith. We can have whatsoever we ask you, Lord, by faith that we receive it. It's not by our, by our own making. It's by faith, Lord, in you. So, Father, increase our faith today as we walk out this building, as we believe and say yes, sir, to you. Anything is possible with you, Jesus. Yes, my Father, anything is possible. So, Lord, we learn baby steps of faith. We learn, Lord Jesus, as we move through this wonderful walk of life. And, Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, I love you.